Hi guys, I'm Sean from Blueb and today I wanted to cover a part of the uh, Mintsoft integration that our team has built with you guys. For anyone who might be onboarded onto our Mintsoft integration or might be making use of it, this video will be helpful in understanding exactly how it works. Um, in this video specifically, I'm going to be covering uh, how the product syncing will work between Mintsoft and um, Syn7. However, in future videos, I'll cover things like the sales uh, process, ASN processing, um, and all of the above. So getting right into it, um, what I have in front of me here is a product that I have in Sin7, um, and I have some details saved against this product, obviously, um, and we're just gonna see how that pushes into Mintsoft. Um, so I've got the actual product here, since this has been in the system for a little while now, if we go into Mintsoft, we can also find the same product in our test Mintsoft account here if I search MSP. For reference, this product is automatically created based on the integration. So there's nothing that I had to do here to load this product in. And we can see how all of the data is pulling through into Mintsoft like so. Now, this sync only works in one way. So if I pull up the, the API documentation here that was provided by our development team, we can see that the arrows only go one way because we can only sync products from Syn7 into Mintsoft. What this means is Syn7 is still going to be your, uh, your singular source of truth when it comes to any information, and that's then going to need to pull into Mintsoft correctly. It's also worth mentioning that Syn7 will update whatever's in Mintsoft on a periodic basis if there is a change to what's in Syn7. Uh, Syn7. So it's important to always keep your information in Syn7 up to date in regards to what Mintsoft needs. Um, so for example, if Mintsoft needs specific weights that aren't matching Syn7, that will need to be updated in Syn7. If you wanna see a case of how this update works, if I just close this back down here and go into our Syn7, we can update our weight and see how that changes within the actual integration itself. Um, so if I go into my product details here and I go into my dimensions and let's just say I change our lengths, widths and heights here from twos to fours. Can add a weight unit here as well and save. If I currently go into Mintsoft, we'll see that against this product, if I go into size details here, we've got the twos that we just had and zero in weight like we just had, and that's all about to be updated. We can do the price here while we're at it as well, so we get all of that information pulling in nicely. Um, while that we wait for that to pull, uh, poll, um, I'll just take you back through all of those fields on that documentation. Now for reference, that polling um, will be dependent on your integration specifically, so it can happen every five minutes, it could happen on an hourly basis, it all depends uh, on how much you want an API running, because obviously that is a cost, and therefore that will have financial implications. But it can be running on any, in any interval that you guys choose for it to be going on. Um, so firstly here we have our SKU, um, and what we've got here is a limitation on the SKU that it can only be 75 characters long, and that's gonna just fill out the SKU field into uh, Mintsoft. The same case for the product name, um, we then have the description, which doesn't have a max length, so that can be as long as you want it to be. So if there's any additional information you need in Mintsoft, you can put whatever you want into that description. And then the same for the short description and the internal note. However, these two do have um, some limitations. Currently, the short description is going to the custom descriptions and the internal notes going to the packing instructions. So um, if you are putting those into Sin7 because you're being... Uh, onboarded on Sin7 as well. It's worth keeping that in mind. That's how that's going to roll across to Mintsoft. We then have the barcode, which is syncing to the barcodes. So you're getting those barcodes full across from Sin7. Uh, we have HS codes, um, which are pulling across from the commodity codes field or pushing into the commodity codes field within Mintsoft. Same for your country of origin. So you're getting all of that um, international shipping information there. Um, I believe this is saying that it must match the format that it provided with in uh, Mintsoft, so you do have to be careful of that. Um, we then have our weights, lengths, heights, and dimensions, like we have within our actual Sin7, which I've just updated, so we'll see that pulling across. And we have our cost price at the bottom here. One uh, key benefit of using this integration over the standard integration is that we do have supporting uh, the support of different costing methods. So we are able to uh, support FIFO as well as uh, FIFO batch, FIFO serial, and FIFO batch and FIFO serial. 
Um, although currently we are having some issues with cereal, where well, we can pick up the cereal. But to our knowledge, um, we cannot see any way where you can actually provide a serial number in Mintsoft at the point of receiving any goods in. Uh, which is causing issues because cereal is required in Sin 7. So if there are any people out there who know why that is and, or why you might be able to chat how you could change that, please do get in touch with us um, or leave a comment saying um, how you would enable the uh, provision of serial numbers for Mintsoft um, good receipts. Um, you can see on the right here, there's then just a breakdown where um, from our SIN7 core, we have a, a product needing batch info, a product needing serial info, or a product needing an expiry date based on this information here. And that's it in terms of how the product is syncing across. Like I say, this can happen on a, any interval you choose really. For us, it's a five minute interval, so hopefully that's gone across by now. Um, but it is important that once this is synced across, if you make any changes to the product, those changes will also sync. So this is gonna be like a live one-to-one -one of your products. If I go back into our Mintsoft now and give this a refresh, hopefully it's updated. If not, I'll have to pause and get back to you in a second. Okay, I'll be back shortly when this updates. Um, bear with me for two minutes. Hi guys, I'm back again and we can see now that all that information has been updated. Like I say, uh, you have to take my word for the fact it was automatic. It's all gone in the background. Our weights have now been updated. Um, our pricing has now been updated as well. And all of the items on uh, this order or on this product have now been updated. And that's it in terms of the product syncing. So this is just gonna be a handy feature that will go along in the background um, of the integration, making sure that you know whatever products or information you're putting into Sin7 is also gonna be in Mintsoft as well. So that all the Mintsoft team have to do is focus on actually operationally receiving those items in, shipping them out, et cetera, et cetera and it's putting the product management in your hands. Um, there is one more aspect to this, um, and that's bundle items. So another feature that is in Sin7 um, that some of you may not, uh, may not use, but some of you may use is the bundling option. Um, and if you do have a product set to auto assembly within Sin7, that will come across as a bundled item in Mintsoft. So if I go into my products here, and if I search for my finished Mintsoft item, This one here, we have a Mintsoft finished product, and that's just basically saying that I've created a assembly in uh, Sin7, and I want that to travel across to Mintsoft in the same way so that they pick that up in the same way. If I now find this item within Mintsoft, to enable bundles to see this we'll see here that we have a bundle breakdown against this item and that's another thing that our integration is doing it is pushing across those bundles as well so um, sorry about that I, uh, um, I just got lost on where the actual bundle option is there so yeah if we um, look at this page here we'll see the actual item information which was the original information passed across but if we go into our products now and we go back into the overview to look at this product one more time or this bundle, we can click on the actions here and manage bundle. And this is what then gets created um, by the integration. We can see here that we have min, uh, Mintsoft batch products being produced and Mintsoft products being consumed, sorry, to uh, make this product. And that is also going to be the way that looks and feels within Sin7 here as well. Um, one caveat to this process is that um, items can't be deleted automatically out of Mintsoft. So although we have a remove option here, um, the API isn't actually able to delete any of these items out of here. So if you are changing bundles, you do need to be careful that if anything has been removed, you remove it manually on Mintsoft rather than having it do it automatically. And that's just a limitation of the Mintsoft API currently where you can't actually delete any of these uh, bundles out of Mintsoft. Um, I think that's it in terms of the integration though, but just to cover that just a little bit more in depth, we have our Mintsoft um, bundle mappings here. So you can see that the SKU and uh, the product name are still the same. We also have the bill of materials that's linking and we're adding in the components based on the SKU and the quantity, which is then setting those products to be bundles as well. That'll be all for me. I hope you found this video helpful. And obviously if you want to either um, get us to implement this um, integration for you, or if you'd like to know more about it, please do get in touch. Um, and that'll be all from me. Thank you and goodbye.